Hey everyone, it's Vanessa. I remember earlier on in my transition, I've been transitioning since November of 2021 and it is currently late August of 2023. So I'm pushing my two year mark here. And I remember at the beginning that there are a lot of times where you're like, what's gonna happen now? Or when can I expect this to happen? And I know it gets frustrating because you're searching all over online. You're going to be looking, probably spending a lot of time on Reddit, honestly. And, but there doesn't seem to be any like clear, concise place where you can just go for everything. And that's what I'm trying to do here for, for you. So this video is made for trans women that are just starting to transition that are going the very trans femme side. I want to do a disclaimer that there is no right or wrong way to transition. I personally am very binary on the trans femme side, so I'm going to be giving my advice for those people. If you're not going that way, I'm sure you'll still find some stuff in this video handy. I just wanted to kind of give just a rundown on uh, things to expect. So if you're just starting or about to start HRT, keep in mind that this is a marathon and not a sprint. Everything's going to take a while. Nothing happens quickly. The first month or two, you're going to be on a low dose. Um, you'll just be starting off on most likely your uh, testosterone blockers and your estradiol. Most likely you'll be taking, starting off with the pills and your body, what you're doing is your body's starting to get used to the switch over because your body's been fed testosterone uh, your whole life and you don't just want to shock the system by ripping it all out all at once. The changes do happen slow. I ramped up on my HRT um, over the first three months or so before I started kind of getting into the full dose. Back when I was on pills, I believe for the first year or so, I was taking two of the two milligram pills under my tongue every day. And then I switched up to six right around when I had my orchiectomy last year. And I don't even remember um, how much of the testosterone blockers I was taking. Yeah, that stuff's uh, unpleasant. So be prepared for unpleasantness from the blockers. I was on Spiro, which is in the U.S. That's what most doctors prescribe. There are other options. I don't really know much about them. I would suggest doing researching on those because Spiro is pretty brutal. Uh, you're going to be peeing constantly, which is extra fun because you're also entering your gender identity and wanting to use the bathroom of a um, your gender and that makes it hard because early transition it's much harder to pass i mean i'm almost two years in i only moderately pass my friend erica likes to say that she passes as a trans person and i think that i'm kind of right along those lines as well so with, with the spiro again you're going to be peeing a lot and you're going to be craving a lot of salt because it's a diuretic you're going to be just peeing out all your salt so i hope you like pickles because you're going to be craving pickles i Highly recommend the Vlasic Bold kind. They're super tasty, they're spicy, and they get you that salt fix. It's funny, after I had my orchiectomy, I am no longer on Spiro, obviously because of it. My cravings for pickles just disappeared. Like, I think I still have an old jar of pickles in my fridge from like last year that I probably need to clean out. Other things to keep in mind early on is things, as I said, are going to start moving slowly. Some of the first things that you'll notice are your emotions will start changing. Your feelings, you'll start feeling more. Um, the testosterone kind of keeps everything kind of like in a tunnel and everything's going to expand and it's kind of mind blowing and it's absolutely incredible. You're going to love it. Your skin will start to soften probably around the three month mark and you will just start your breast buds around three to six months. It's again, it's different for everybody. If it hasn't started yet, don't worry too much. If you're really concerned about it, talk to your doctor. Um, you might be on too, too low of a dose. You'll be getting blood tests, get used to having needles in your arm. It sucks, but you're gonna be getting blood tests every three to six months. Those blood tests are to test your stradiol and testosterone levels. Sometimes my doctor also tests for estrone, which is a, another form of estrogen. Once you start progesterone, they'll probably start uh, testing for that as well. So if you start progesterone, you don't have to. That's up to you and your doctor. As when the breast buds start, your boobs, your nipples are going to hurt so much. Like you will accidentally bump into something and it will be agony. You will scream like it is not fun. So get used to protecting your chest. You'll want to buy bras. Bras are very hard to find. I'm not going to lie. I still haven't really found one because of when you measure 
you measure, I need to back up here so you can see, you measure around here for your band and when you're assigned male at birth, you've had testosterone coursing through your body, your body's gonna, will have formed to be broader. So, but you're also gonna have tiny boobs. Most trans women don't get huge boobs. I am, I'm around an A cup. The only bra I found that I was able to fit closely is a uh, 42B. I have, to, I still have to stuff it. So I very rarely wear, wear a bra. My advice is to get, I'm gonna have to take one of them off here so you can see it. Ooh, these things, these are just pasties. They're wonderful. You can get them on uh, get them on Amazon, like twenty bucks or so. I'll I'll put a link in here so you can see them. Uh, they just have a little bit of adhesive on the back. Um, every couple of days, you just want to wash them with soap and water and let them dry. And you just put them on, and that will protect your nipple, and it'll also keep you from nipping out, as they say. Yeah, that's my solution for when you have itty bitties. If you're skinnier. Finding a bra would be a whole lot easier. If you're smaller, just in general, I'm six feet tall and 240 pounds, so I am a bigger girl, so it's just been harder to find things. I believe the one bra I have is from Third Love. It's their t-shirt bra. It's very comfortable, but still, I have to stuff it. Get these things. These things, they're cheap. They, I've had this one for, I've been wearing these for like six months. As long as you just wash them, they're fine. It's a minimal investment. It keeps everything nice and smooth. They provide absolutely no support or anything. So um, you're not going to have like the cleavage and stuff like that that uh, you would hope for. But again, when you're starting off, you're not going to have to really have that anyways unless you're exceedingly lucky. And if you are that lucky, well done. I'm jealous. So don't worry about your boobs not coming in immediately. It's going to take a while. Everything is slow. Your skin, as I said, will start to soften, which is amazing. You will notice some of your body hair coming in slower. I've still had some laser done. I had one laser session done on my chest like shortly after I came out and that honestly took care of most of the dark hair. The issue with laser is one, if you have darker skin, it's harder to find lasers that work. There are some, but it is a little bit more dif difficult to find people that have those lasers. Light hairs, if you red hairs, blonde hairs, or in my case, gray and white hairs, don't get touched by a laser. You have to do that with electrolysis. And let me tell you, electrolysis is not fun. But, you know, if you want the hair to be gone, you're probably going to have to do that. But your hair will start thinning. I've had one laser session on my belly as well. And most of my laser I've had done has been on my face. I think I've had 13 sessions on my face so far. I still have a little bit of dark hair right here and right here. And I just use, I just use foundation. If you're looking to cover up uh, facial hair after you shaved. I bought my, I, I have a cheap, just little brown uh, electric shaver, which gets pretty close. I'll link the one that I have in here as well, so you can uh, try one out. I'm trying to give advice on all just the absolute cheapest stuff that you can get, because it's just, when you come out, you're not going to have any money, because it's expensive to be trans. You have to completely throw out your wardrobe, find a whole new one, and and if you want to be starting makeup, you have to invest in all that. Stuff's not cheap. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is get things as cheap as possible for you. With the makeup, as I was saying, after you put on a base coat of foundation, oh, you always want to do that. Well, first you can put on a, like a mattifying base coat or something like that first if you want. And then uh, do a little base coat, of, base coat of foundation. I'll get into makeup a little bit later. Um, they make a, if you have lighter skin, I honestly don't know how this works for people with darker skin because I don't have darker skin. I'm giving, this is just my own experience here. But uh, with lighter skin, you use a orange concealer to just kind of spread it along here um, and blend it out a little bit and then let it dry. And then you can put lighter concealer on top of it and maybe a little bit more foundation. And what that's going to do is when you still have facial hair that's darker, it's going to look under the makeup, it's going to kind of turn greenish blue and you're trying to offset that color. Because when it comes to makeup, less is more. If you do that, it'll kind of offset that and you'll have less of uh, that kind of greenish kind of cast that kind of gives it away. So you're going to have a lot of experimenting with that. Another thing that you're, that you might be looking to do is tucking. And there are many different ways for an everyday kind of thing. They do make like tuck kits and stuff like that which are cool. I've actually never used one, but like if you're going swimming or stuff, something like that, that can be handy. I never did that. I honestly have only gone swimming once since I came out and I just used my tucking underwear. 
I have tried three different kinds, and by far my favorite is the Enfem or Enfem, uh, E-N space F-E-M-M-E. I will link it, but I'll show off what all I've gotten. So this here is the Enfem. It is a Enfem Max Smooth Everyday Breather Gaff. Um, Finding the right size will be hard. Um, this one is XL, it actually doesn't fit me, um, so I had to switch to larges instead. But this one by far holds tux for me the best. Other people will be different, but throughout the day, like if I'm wearing a skirt or something like that, if you're wearing a dress, tucking really isn't quite that important. Um, you can still kind of hold things in place a little bit with some other undies, but um, if you're wearing a skirt, you'll probably have a shorter top as well. and. To to keep that smooth profile. Uh, these are absolutely amazing. Do not put them in a the dryer. They are just wash them and then hang them to dry. That's very important. Um, putting them in a the dryer will mess them all up, so don't do that. I've also tried some other ones. Um, these are the Tomboy X. And I think part of it is if you're like me and you're heavier, these kind of like roll down a little bit on you because I still have I still have a, uh, quite a bit of gut here and I have found with these you kind of want to size up because they kind of slide down but I just haven't as much luck with them they're just I haven't been able to hold them on these are like my emergency backup if I have no underwear left and then I also tried on uh, these origami customs and these came out of Canada and they were pretty expensive and again this might be something that might be better for some people if you're if you're not as heavy as I am but I honestly it, these did not work for me so they got amazing reviews so I'm guessing they work for a lot of people but paying for your buck wise I would go with the on fimes for the days that you really uh, need to hold a tuck especially if you're wearing uh, jeggings or anything that you want to hold a tuck that that's what i recommend you're still going to come undone throughout the day get used to uh doing some retucking on the sly it's 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 so so fun um as i'm recording this i'm recording this on august 24th i am four days away from my uh gender affirming surgery on the 28th so i'm actually wearing tuckers today but this is going to be my last day of wearing my unfems so unfortunately like I wish I could donate some of the stuff, but I don't really want to donate underwear. That'd be kind of, kind of gross. So not totally into that. For an everyday solution, especially if you're wearing a dress, dresses are absolutely amazing. Invest in dresses. I recommend the Cupid brand. Their shapewear, Cupid shapewear. I will, I will link them as well here. They hold a tuck very well. They they pull up on your, they pull up on your tummy fairly high about here. So they do a little bit of shaping. They weren't designed for tucking, but I have found they work pretty well, especially as you get further on in your transition, things down there are going to start to shrink a little bit. I hear that doesn't happen if you use them often, but I, yeah, since I came out, I've had zero interest in using anything that thing down there. I haven't even dated. Um, I've kept everything uh, very um, non uh, intercourse -y, so yeah, I just uh, gave myself away there, didn't I? Um, so that is my advice for tucking. It's, again, if you want to do the, the tucking tape and stuff that you can get, there are great options out there. I know Michaela Ville, I believe, has done a review on one of them that Unclockable Me, I believe, is the company that, that makes them. So, but I don't have experience with those, so I can't really give advice. As for clothes, you are probably going to want to ditch the boy mode clothes. You might keep some things. It'd be nice to keep a pair of jeans. For me, I just, I yeeted everything. And buying a new wardrobe is expensive. It's going to be hard to find things that fit. Like you're, if you're like me, you hate trying things on, especially uh, shopping while trans. You're going to be super self-conscious, thinking everybody's staring at you. Uh, if you live in an area like I do, where it's very conservative, everybody is staring at you. But, you know, they can... Um, I go to Goodwill. Uh, I do everything uh, through th thrifting. The main thing that uh, you're going to find, both tops and bottoms, since a lot of us trans uh, trans women are, we're kind of triangular shaped just because, you know, the whole testosterone thing for most of our lives. Some people are lucky. Some people didn't have that. Some people are smaller. And if you're that way, I'm jealous. But 
If you're like me, you're tall and broad up here. So the sizing for everything and women's clothes, nothing matches up. So you're going to have a lot of guesswork. That's that's another reason why it's good to thrift, especially uh, to kind of figure out what things, how things fit. As I lost weight, I went from like a size 16, I'm down to about a size 12 of pants, and those fit pretty well. About a year or so in, your butt will start filling out, which is amazing. I'm not going to lie, it's awesome. Uh, there are exercises and stuff you can do to, to do that, like hip thrusts and stuff. You can look that up. That, that'll help. Um, that can help slowly increase your, your butt uh, volume. It's what happens when you're ADHD slash autistic slash ADHD. It's you just go off on tangents everywhere, so this video is going to be all over the place. <laughs> I've already been recording for almost 19 minutes. Who knows how long this will be in the end? Probably pretty long. But I'm hoping people find this helpful. Anyways, um... You'll probably have to try some things. Uh, you can find some general guides online for like what your size is. It's kind of a trial and error thing, but when you're thrifting, everything's cheap. So go buy yourself a pair of pants for like five bucks. As for dresses and tops, the number one thing that you're gonna run into is having the broadness of your shoulders. Measure yourself from here to here with a, um, just like a, a tailor's uh, measuring tape and find that size. I think I'm like, I don't even remember what I am. And then bring that tape with you when you're shopping and put that on the shoulders of the dresses and tops that you're looking for. And make sure that this, the seams of the, the seams of the tops and dresses match up with that. And then you'll have much better luck with it fitting. If you have a belly like me, longer things are better. I'm tall so I can actually wear dresses as tops and it kind of turned into a little bit of a tunic top but dresses are the way to go i love them they're comfortable especially if you're like me and you sweat a decent amount which is still gonna happen uh, you just won't stink as much it's they're they're just nice and airy and embrace the dress they're they're amazing that's pretty much all i wear uh, even though today i'm not i'm wearing just a, a tank and a skirt because again it's laundry day and I'm out of my underwear other than my um, unfam tuckers. So, um, yeah, go shopping, explore, try new things, try new colors, try new patterns, try new cuts. I have found I like things that are kind of low cut here, especially as my boobs are starting to come in a little bit. Very gender affirming. You don't need to spend much money on jewelry. Um, you can get secondhand stuff or just buy cheap things. Everything. I get compliments on my jewelry all the time. Of course, women just compliment each other anyway, so it's just kind of a wonderful thing. But, like, this necklace I'm wearing right now is from Lovisa at a mall near me. And you can buy, like, three necklaces or earrings or stuff there for $10. So, do they last long? Not really, but for that cheap, who cares? If you want to get your ears pierced, get your ears pierced. I just went and got it done at I had it done at a mall at the mall back in June of 2022. It doesn't hurt that much, and I know a lot of people might be freaked out about that. It's not a big deal <laughs> compared to electrolysis. It's nothing. I guess that's what I'll get into next is hair removal. I, I covered it a little bit here, but there are two different ways of doing hair removal. There is laser. And laser is, they call it permanent hair reduction. It's not an absolute foolproof way of getting rid of hair, but the way I see it is laser is like the big riding lawnmower and electrolysis is the edger. So um, if you're like me, you're older, I'm 42. I have a mix of, I have salt and pepper on my face and elsewhere in my body. So I've had to do both. Uh, the laser has done quite well. Your hair also grows in cycles, so um, you can get all lasered off and then six months later, different hair will grow that you have to get lasered off. So again, I've had 13 sessions on my face so far. I'm not gonna lie, it sucks. It hurts. Take some Tylenol ahead of time. With laser, you can't put any creams on or anything to numb it down. I've been told that Tylenol is better than anti-inflammatories. For some reason, taking anti-inflammatories kind of messes it up a little bit. I don't know. It's electrolysis that... I'm gonna be honest, is electrolysis is bad. It is horrible. It is the most painful thing I've ever done in my life. And I've had it done extensively, not so much on my face yet, but to get gender confirmation surgery, you need to be getting rid of as much hair in your nether region as possible. So I've had, I believe, eight laser sessions and a ton of electrolysis sessions. The laser was getting all the dark stuff and electrolysis is getting the, the light stuff. And 
If you think having an electrified needle inserted into your perineum hurts, yeah, it does. None of the painkillers I really took have helped that much, but again, everyone has different pain tolerances. I wish you luck on it. You get used to it a little bit more as time goes on. If you ever any have a conservative person or an unsupportive family member that looks at you and says, being trans is a choice, you're not really trans, uh, take them to get their nethers uh, done with electrolysis for an hour and then say, would you choose to do this? And they're going to say no because it sucks. So, yeah. But those are two heavy mobiles, laser and electrolysis. Electrolysis is permanent. Laser is not. Uh, laser is a permanent reduction. Electrolysis guarantees that it's not going to come back. Both are expensive and neither one are usually covered by insurance. You can do payment plans with certain places, but yeah, do your research. Uh, try not to spend too much money. There's going to be a bunch of different places to do it. I started off at Milan hair removal for my face, doing a payment plan. And I found that I'm way overspending there. So I switched to other places for other uh other areas of my body and have saved a lot of money that way so it's going to be expensive it's going to be painful but it really does help with dysphoria but again there's no right or wrong way to transition if you want to keep your beard keep your beard i did have a pretty glorious beard in the past uh i will plug in a uh, little before picture of me so you can kind of see how that looked um my body will slowly start reshaping i noticed it really most in my thighs which i love um your thighs start filling out especially since i'm heavier fat does redistribute it's happened in my face somewhat i'll have a i'll, I'll put a side by side uh, photo of my face here so you kind of see it from like three years apart everything kind of just moves around a little bit it has not moved from my gut uh too much if you have a bare belly you're probably going to keep that until you can lose it i have tried my hardest to lose weight. I started my transition at 258 pounds. I got down to 218 and then I upped my progesterone dose and that skyrocketed and along with stress and everything. So I'm back up to 240 now. My goal is to get down to 200. I tried Noom. It worked pretty well, but I hate counting calories. Um, now I'm just going to count them in my head. I have a problem with food. I love food. I just sit there and binge eat. So just be ready for that. Uh, but when you do gain weight, you're going to start, uh, if you gain weight, you do start getting it in the right places. Uh, once you've been on estrogen for long enough and all the testosterone has worked out of your body. So I love how my thighs have filled out. It's super affirming. I will move on. How we close out the video with a little bit of makeup information. Um, when it comes to makeup, don't spend too much money. And a key thing to remember is less is more. I I don't leave the house without at least a little bit of makeup on just because I like how I look with it. To do some quick cheap things to make your life easier. For foundation, I use this CoverGirl Olay. My camera's not really focusing on it. The Simply age, Ageless stuff. And I just put that with a big puffy brush. And... I just tap it on, just a light coat. Um, you don't want to smear it around because that messes with the pigment. Just tap it on. And again, less is more. You, if you want to cake makeup on, fine, more power to you. But if you sweat, it's just going to get gross. I just do it just to kind of even things out. And I also have a habit of tweezing out my uh, my white facial, ha uh, facial hair because I haven't had too much electrolysis done there yet. And it just bothers me. So, or sometimes I use an epilator on my face and I don't recommend doing that. That hurts. So this stuff I have found, it's about, I think I spent like $18 at this at the drugstore. Um, they have a bunch of different shades. Uh, mine, this is just a creamy natural. Um, it's still a little bit light for me right now because I've uh, tanned a little bit. Another thing that you might want to look into doing, I have hooded eyes. A lot of people have hooded eyes and um, when I'm putting on makeup, I get a, I can get a lot of transfer from my eyelid to here. I have found that some eyeshadow primer, uh, this stuff just came from, it's lip brand, it just, uh, it was a gift, I believe it came from Ulta. You just use a tiny little bit, put it on your finger, and just uh, rub it on your eyelids, and that kind of keeps things from transferring off, uh, especially handy on hotter days. Uh, I live in Ohio where it gets very warm and humid. And so yeah, that helps a lot um, with the eyeshadow and then when you do eyeliner. I've tried a few eyeliners. Some, I, I was told at first to try like the pencil eyeliners. I was never able to get used to those because you have to push kind of hard. What I found is this 
NYX Epic Ink Liner. This stuff is absolutely amazing. It's very easy to use. This one tube, like these tubes last like six months and they're only $10. It has just this little, just a little brush point. You might be able to see that I've trimmed some of the, uh, the bristles off a little bit, but it's very easy to control. Um, and just remember when you're doing eyeliner that, I just noticed my dog is passed out behind me. They're sisters, not twins. It's going to take a while to get it right, and you're going to wind up going side to side to side to side to side. Don't be afraid to wipe it off and try again. There's going to be a lot of a lot of experimenting to figure out how you do it. Sometimes I go a little bit wilder and with more wings and stuff like that. But today, I'm just, just fairly subtle. I'm kind of into the whole subtle look. With eyeshadows, do what you want with those. Um, get a bunch of different brushes. You mainly want to get like a... a, a a smaller brush just to get in here um, and then a little bit wider one for doing the rest of your eye and then blend it out but again do what you want makeup is an individual thing I try to go a little bit more subtle especially since I'm a little bit older if I were younger I would probably go a little bit uh, wilder you can find tons of cheap uh, makeup is cheap if you, you can just find cheap stuff everywhere so like you can just get like eyeshadow just these little packs here one thing that you will learn a lot if you watch makeup tutorial videos for trans women you can generally pass a little bit better if you do a little bit less wild colors i like doing colors but some nudes and stuff like this you can see i've used the uh just kind of like a nude gold sparkle the most out of this pack um and these things are cheap eyebrows are a pain <laughs> Um, I still haven't figured them out very well. People keep telling me to do an arch, which I've started doing a little bit more. But for an eyebrow pencil, what I have found, these little elf things. There's just the pencil on one end and the little brush on the other. You can buy two packs of these things at Target or other kind of uh, places for like three dollars. They're super, three to five dollars. They're super cheap. They don't last really long. You can get a couple weeks out of one of these, but they're cheap. Um, they're pretty easy to apply and forgiving. They're easy to wipe off so you can try it again. You can get in and out pretty quickly. Uh, for concealer, I use this uh, CoverGirl True Blend. Um, I need a new tube. This is, it gets kind of expensive. This is like 20 some dollars. It just has a little bit of a foam thing on the end and I only really put it here under my eyes and then just blend it out because I'm a mom of a three-year-old and I'm always exhausted because I don't get any sleep. You'll also, um, especially if you have some facial hair, you'll put some around just wh wherever you want to put concealer, just dab it on and just blend it out a little bit. Uh, there's tons of different colors. Um, just find which color works for you. Uh, what else? I, for blush, I just use a little blush brush. Sis girls will can kind of get away with doing blush a little bit higher. Tutorials I've seen uh, for trans girls, since our facial sh uh, shape's a little bit different, to do a little bit lower or up on the apples of your cheeks here, like that. You might have a little bit more luck. Again, this is all preference. We all have different face shapes. This is what works for me. It might not necessarily work for you. Um, I have not had much experience with contour. I'm actually wearing a little bit today, uh, just for this video. Um, I put some up along my hairline and just some on either side of my nose and then put some highlights here. My advice with makeup is start simple and just work your way up from there. I have tried a number of different mascaras. So far the one I like the most is this Maybelline Full and Soft. Um, it doesn't, it's not too clumpy and it's pretty easy to apply. Uh, with mascara, I found you want to do that last after everything else. Um, I sweat a lot and live in a humid uh, area, and as a photographer, I have sweat my makeup before, so I've invested in some setting spray. This stuff helps a lot. <clears throat> they make setting, you can get setting powders, setting powder, setting powders as well, but this stuff I found to be pretty helpful. Um, and Koki uh, makes some cool uh, eyeshadows as well. I have this Arabian Nights uh, Koki eyeshadow, uh, which I'm actually wearing right now. Um, I'm wearing a, a teal, and then I put like, uh, it's kind of like a silvery gold, rose gold over it uh, with a blending brush, because I like to have things that match. Thought I ran over my dog, but um, you see I have the teal on my skirt there. Kind of match that, and just, you know, oh yeah. 
that is my quick and dirty makeup tutorial, quick and dirty advice for uh, early transition. As I said, there is no right or wrong way to transition. You do what works for you. But I hope that if you're early on transition that you find this helpful and that this kind of takes a lot of the information that you're finding. Um, the timelines for everyone are different. Um, I would not expect your boobs to start coming in before four to six months. Some people aren't going to grow them, some people will. I started progesterone at around six months in at 100 milligrams and now I'm on 200 milligrams. Um, currently I am off of estrogen for the most part for pre-surgery. That is fun um, once your body gets used to it, yanking it out, but um, there are blood clot issues at risk with uh, being on a lot of estrogen uh, before surgery. So uh, for the past three weeks or about, about past month, I have dropped from doing my injections, which are wonderful, to just taking one pill a day under my tongue. And the week of my surgery, next week, I won't be able to take any at all. So if, if you do go off estrogen for any reason, and you're still on testosterone blockers, or like me, you've had an orchiectomy, you're gonna go through a sort of menopause, and that's not fun. Hot flashes, mood swings, uh, anything that you attribute with uh, menopause, it's gonna happen. Oh, one last thing to kind of close out. Um, trans girls do get PMS. Uh, we have a cycle, about a month. Uh, obviously, we don't have a full menstrual cycle because we don't have uh, that equipment down there, but you will have a cycle with, for me, the cramping and a lot of other trans girls, the cramping is an intestinal thing. Um, it's obviously not fun. You'll have mood swings and people will, people will tell you so, um, but that's something that you might not hear too often about. Feel free to ask uh, questions in the comments and if I know the answers, I will answer. I hope you found this useful. I'm Vanessa. You can find me on socials everywhere, Venestradial. Um, I am also the um, one of the hosts of the Transcending Humanity podcast, which is all about trans people, our allies, and I highly recommend giving it a listen. It's a passion project. Um, it is hosted by trans people, uh, trans men, trans women, non-binary, and our allies, and it's a lot of fun and very informative. So, um, good way to bring some hope, uh, you know, this darkness that we're going through. Um, so check that out, Transcending Humanity. We have a YouTube channel, uh, Transcending Humanity. Our website is transcendinghumanity.com, and you can also find us on all podcast platforms. I release all the episodes both on podcast and in YouTube versions, so check that out. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this is helpful. Next time I do a video, I will hopefully have a freshly installed vagina. Um, I'm hoping to be able to do like a little update video from the hospital afterwards. So thank you. Have a great day and all that. Or have the day you want. That's what we say to my kid. Have your day. It's annoying when someone tells you to have a great day. What if you don't want to have a great day? What if you just want to have a crap day? So you, you have your day. Yeah. Again, why is my mouse working? What is happening?